I'm incredibly passionate about helping women understand their hormones and address them naturally without feeling dependent on hormonal birth control, which is why you'll find protocols to eliminate common hormone concerns within my book. I believe that prescribing birth control to treat symptoms of hormone imbalance without any question of the root cause is a disservice to all women. Does that make me anti-birth control? No, in fact, I consider myself pro-informed consent, which means giving you all the information you need to make the best decision for your body. And today, I'm going to be giving you just that. This is the information I wish I had before I started the pill, or during the decade I spent on it. And as a first-generation college student, I'm super grateful that I had this tool available to enable me to achieve my goals and have the freedom to have a baby when I was ready. I think we can all agree that the invention of the pill was totally revolutionary, and it resulted in sweeping social and economic improvements that gave women the freedom to choose whether or not to have children and work outside the home. It quite literally changed women's lives. In fact, one study found that the pill was partly responsible for an estimated 30% increase in women's wages by the 1990s. Access to the pill also contributed to higher college enrollment and completion rates among women in the 1960s and 70s. There's no denying the facts. Hormonal birth control was a total game changer for us gals. But there's more to the birth control story that many of us haven't been told. And as we dive into birth control, I want you to know we're talking about the pill, the patch, the ring, the shot, the implant, and the hormonal IUD. One of the most common side effects that women complain of on the pill is changes in mood. A study in the Journal of the American Medical Association of over 1 million women showed that women who began the pill were 23% more likely to be prescribed an antidepressant which means it contributes to a bit more than moodiness. Researchers went on to discover that women who used the progestin-only, or mini-pill, were 34% more likely to be prescribed an antidepressant. Another recent study has discovered that young women who use hormonal contraceptives have three times the risk of suicide compared to those who have never used this type of birth control. The study found that the threat of suicide was highest during the first two months after beginning the pill, the ring, the hormonal IUD, or the patch. While the risk did plateau after a year, it still remained higher compared to that of women who never used hormonal contraceptives. The patch had the highest danger of suicide attempts, with the other hormonal contraceptives following closely behind. Oral birth control is associated with an increased risk of stroke, heart attack, insulin resistance, high blood pressure, elevated cholesterol, and the development of autoimmunity. Birth control can be a great tool to prevent pregnancy, but it seems that every gal who comes into my practice is on the pill for a different reason. They've had acne as a teenager, painful periods, or they were diagnosed with endometriosis or PCOS. Same end results for all of these different issues, birth control. In fact, 60% of women are actually using birth control for primarily symptom management, not necessarily to prevent pregnancy. But as you've learned in this course, there are so many ways to work with your body to balance your hormones naturally. The primary way that birth control pills prevent pregnancy is to shut down brain ovarian communication. Hormonal birth control is designed to stop ovulation by suppressing the production of two brain hormones, follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. FSH and LH, as they're referred to, work together to mature an egg and trigger ovulation. Now, there are two types of pills. There's the combination pill and the progestin only. The combination pill is most commonly used and contains synthetic estrogen and progestin. It's more effective and has less breakthrough bleeding. This combo pill suppresses ovulation, thickens cervical mucus to block sperm, changes tubal motility, and thins the uterine lining. The progestin-only pill, aka the mini pill, is typically used by women who have had adverse reactions to synthetic estrogen or are currently breastfeeding. 
It only stops ovulation, though, in about 60% of women. In progestin-only contraceptives, like the mini pill or the IUD, not all women stop ovulating. Progestin works by thinning the lining of your uterus, the endometrium, so that if an egg does become fertilized, it's unable to implant in that uterine lining. This is one way in which women have lighter or absent periods while using a hormonal IUD. It also thickens cervical secretions, making it difficult for sperm to make it to the egg in the event that ovulation does occur. Now, what about that placebo week while you're taking the pill? That's just like a normal period, right? Nope, not even close. When you take that placebo week of pills, you're not actually getting a period because you never ovulated. This isn't a menstrual cycle. Instead, this is what's referred to as a withdrawal bleed. So when your doctor tells you that your period is fixed by using hormonal birth control, you can understand that it never did actually impact your menstrual cycle in a positive way. It only induced a medication withdrawal bleed. Mm -hmm.